So I'll cut right to the chase, and I, I'm I'm just gonna ask, why'd you do it? Well, well to, to be, be honest, honest, I was feeling like kind of depressed. Also, also I, was I was a bit drunk, drunk at the time. time. Well, that's no good. Did you did you try hanging a bunch of notes around in the woods? Yes, yes I, I tried, tried hanging, hanging notes in the woods. woods. Did you try staring blankly at people? Yes, yes I, I stared, stared blankly, blankly at people. people. Well, I guess that's all really a Slenderman can do, huh? Yeah, yeah but none, none of it helped. helped. I was still depressed. And, and then, then I, I got, got even, even drunker. drunker. When did you start turning people into trees? Oh, oh. That, that was, was a phase. That, that was, was after, after the whole Marble Hornets thing had ended. ended. Okay, well, don't take this the wrong way, but what were you thinking? Well, well quite, quite honestly, honestly uh, my brand recognition, recognition was in the toilet at the, at the time, and I was trying to find some new and interesting way to be relevant again. Oh, okay. And how'd that work out? It, it didn't, didn't work. work. It did not, not work. work. Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing horse, because when it comes to cinema, humans cannot be trusted. I'm also not fond of tigers. They're so cute and cuddly looking, but they'll scratch your face off. Nature's cruel. Slender Man. The tentacly Slender Man. Does he have tentacles? Eh, sometimes. That's not really a consistency, is it? There was a point back in ancient times, back in the early 2010s, where Slender Man was the main man. This tall dude took the internet by storm, mostly thanks to the video game Slender the Eight Pages. None of us had watched Marble Hornets at the time. Thousands of Let's Players were playing Slender the Eight Pages. There were about a hundred spin-off games. There were a ton of fan films. Slender the Arrival hit the internet like a fucking train, and then as quickly as Slender Man rose to prominence, boom, he was gone. It was like some kind of cosmic shift, and then nobody wanted Slender Man anymore. It was a disappearance on par with Cotton Eye Joe. Where did you come from? Where did you go? This guy was at the top of his game. There was even an actual Slender Man murder. A bunch of teenagers sacrificed someone and said, Slender Man told me to do it. Honestly, that might have had something to do with him falling from grace. I just want to go on record. I never asked you to do any of that. I just wanted you to pick up my dry cleaning. After two 12-year-old girls completely destroyed your boy's image here, Slender Man would go into hiding. Nobody would speak of Mr. Slenderman. It's like Lord Voldemort. You do not speak his name. That is until Hollywood writer David Burke and director Sylvan White came out and said, Slenderman movie, boys! <laughs> Why aren't you laughing? Everybody loved Slenderman! Six fucking years ago! Nobody wanted this movie. This was like if someone wanted to make a movie about the Sparta remix, but it was co-starred alongside Gungam Style and Pen Pineapple Apple Pen. Or some other really stale creepypasta from 2008 or 2012. I'm not really that big in the creepypasta scene, so you be the judge. Even if this movie was good, Marble Hornets fans would hate it, but it's not even mediocre. David Elric said... Slenderman aspires to be, for the YouTube era, what The Ring was to the VHS generation. But The Ring is good. Slenderman is terrible. It's funny I bring up Marble Hornets because... I don't think they watched it. I don't think the guy who wrote this movie watched Marble Hornets and took any inspiration off of that. They did not bother with the source material. Like... Marble Hornets ended back in 2014. It would have been interesting to maybe, you know, build off the end of that or something, you know, without the creator's permission and just piss everybody off. Though to be fair, I'm not entirely sure what they're doing now. 
Marble Hornets didn't invent Slenderman, per se. It was created by Eric Knudsen. Like, it was inspired off of H.P. Lovecraft, but Marble Hornets did bring Slenderman into the limelight and pretty much just dominated, like, what Slenderman was about. And the writer for this movie came in and said, No, we don't need that. We're gonna summon Slenderman with an internet video. Not even gonna try to base it off of the murder, or um, attempted murder, at least. She survived. I, I, I thought you all would like to know. Of all the things for this movie to take inspiration from, though, it either took it from The Ring or The Grudge. He's behind you, by the way. And even then, we have these idiots to bumblefuck their way through the mystery. They say, yeah, I told you he was behind you. That's that, that, that's just me looking at the trailer and being like, no. It's that predictable. Our blind riff for this movie went down the exact same way. Oh, there he is. <laughs> She's gonna turn her head a direction and he'll be gone. And then she'll turn around. There he is. Watch. There he is, he's right there. <laughs> That is the that is the weirdest camera shot I've ever seen, by the way. A lot of the shots in this trailer don't make it into the finished movie, by the way. Remember the one earlier in the science lab where she stabs herself in the head with a scalpel? Where the fuck was that? Where is this scene? Where is any of this? What was going on at the studio when this mistake happened? Well, well, before, before the, the movie, movie came out, out uh, we, we had, had to shop, shop it around because the distributors didn't want to do it. And then, uh, the guys that we did get with, uh, wanted us to bring it down to an R rating, so, um, we had to cut a lot of stuff out. And how'd that work out for ya? We have an 8% and a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. IMDB isn't any better. The disastrous marketing didn't stop there, by the way. After the trailer came out, Bill Wire, the father of one of the children convicted in the attempted murder, protested the film's production and release as extremely distasteful. He did not want theaters to carry it. But as a result of those scenes being chopped out of the movie, it leads to a lot of confusion and continuity errors. One of the characters, who we see in the trailer, stabbing herself in the face with a scalpel, yeah, that scene is gone, so her character just kinda disappears. We just stop focusing on her. One minute she's there, and the next she, she's gone. This right here, this is literally the last time we see her in the entire movie. So, uh, I guess either she's fine or Slenderman got her off camera. <laughs> she was nominated at the 2019 Golden Raspberry Awards as Worst Supporting Actress. Frankly, I think they all should have won because these characters are very, very stupid. There's a scene earlier in the movie where this same character, actually, they're all like, sacrificing stuff to Slenderman to try and get the girl back who died at the beginning of the movie. And they say, okay, put these blindfolds on and no matter what happens, do not take them off. So she takes off the blindfold almost immediately. It's different for everyone, but it only ends in insanity or death. So how long until one of them takes the blindfold off? They do this a whole bunch of times in the movie, actually. They say, don't do this thing, and then uh, they do that thing immediately. There's this guy in the movie who I can't be bothered to remember his name, but they say, don't watch the Slender Man summoning video, and literally the next day, like, you can tell that he summoned Slender Man. Everyone in this movie is an absolute moron. We don't, like, try to stop Slenderman or try to, you know, get him to go away. It's just these three girls and a bunch of supporting actors bumble-fucking their way through the mystery. Halfway through said mystery, teen drama gets in the way, and then that guy I mentioned earlier, he starts going... 
And then you got the one girl in this movie. It's like, oh, I, I'm an expert now. I read a book. It's called Bioelectric Systems and the Paranormal. Two things that probably don't go together in a million years. Either way, I think something else got cut out right there. Also, I think Slenderman is having a bit of an identity crisis in this movie. I, I can, can absolutely, absolutely confirm, confirm I was having, having an identity, identity crisis, crisis at the time. time. Eh, see? Confirmed it. That's why Slenderman is made of wood in this movie. At least I'm pretty sure he's made of wood. I'm 86% sure Slenderman is made of wood in this movie. You're being haunted by a man made of wood, but still dresses up in a really nice suit for some reason. Why would he be made of wood and wear a suit? That doesn't make any sense. At this point, you're not being haunted by Slenderman. You're being haunted by an ant. An ant who for some reason is summoned by an internet video. What, what, what's the connection here? In what universe is there a semi-rational link between these things? And then at the end of all of this, every single thing that has happened, he turns into a giant wooden spider person, and then turns his victims into a tree. What? What? What the fuck? Oh, but wait, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes his victims just go insane. Sometimes they just disappear. How come only some people get turned into trees? That's not fair. How would you feel if you had to be buried alive for all eternity and the other guy just got community service? We never actually did see three of our four main characters die. In fact, according to the trailer, at the end of the movie, one of them was supposed to come back, I think. But we had to cut that scene because reasons. I'll admit, I've never seen anything like this. Like, cutting scenes, like, is one thing, but cutting really important scenes with extremely important plot points? That's another thing entirely. That and, and their complete and utter lack, lack for my source, source material. material. Like, I, I, I think they played Slender of the Eight, eight pages, pages and said, let's make a movie about, about me. You know, I never really was a big fan of Slenderman, but I actually feel sorry for this guy now. Aren't these horror movies supposed to make you root for the victim? I, I actually feel sorry for Slender Man now. Because he deserved better than this. You could have at least, like, like, read or watched any kind of source material. But as far as I can tell, you didn't do nothing. No Marble Hornets, no subreddits, no fanfics, no shipfix, no forums, no lore vids, no nothing. Wait, Wait what, what was, was that, that fourth, fourth one? one? Who needs all that stuff? People don't care. Slenderman is a vague cryptid. Nobody's gonna care. Nobody even cares anymore. And they were right. Nobody cares about Slenderman anymore. I, for the life of me, cannot understand the logic behind making this movie. Slenderman had been dead. Slenderman interest had been dead for five years by the time this movie came out. I, I for the life of me, cannot imagine who the, the who are they trying to appeal to with this movie how lost do you have to be to make something like this like how badly do you misunderstand your own market it's like when sony re-released morbius in theaters because everybody was morbing all over the place and they figured they could make more money they didn't by the way am i so out of touch no it's the children who are wrong. Another thing is, this movie is really, really ugly to look at. 80% of the film is shot at night, and as a result, a lot of these scenes are way too dark, and the few scenes that are shot during the day end up being way too bright. Sometimes, when we turn the flashlights off, it actually gets brighter. So, on top of it being a mess, it's also extremely ugly to look at. It even has the audacity to shove epilepsy in our face for a couple of scenes, which I will not show you here. I will do you that kindness. I will save you from these filmmakers who also seemingly forgot that cell phones don't really record very good at night. This is awfully high resolution for a cell phone at night. Okay, you know the video quality would not be this good. 
The biggest problems in this movie stem from them missing scenes that they had to rip out of the movie. It's glaring continuity errors and the writers not narrowing down what they want Slenderman to be able to do. He can phase through walls, he can turn into fog, he can rip your face off for about 10 seconds. Turn into a giant spider guy, teleport, turn people into a tree. Video call people on a cell phone about how he's about to murder you. Summon a bunch of tentacles everywhere to grab people. Hide a bunch of notes in the woods. Kill you even if you somehow win the game. Actually, they hid all of the notes in this movie on one desk. It, it, it completely took all the fun out of it. Guys, how are we supposed to collect the, uh, the eight pages if you just have them all here on a desk? Now where's the fun in that? It's not much of a game, it's just find the desk at this point. You probably pieced this together already, but this movie is very, very keen to jump right into the horror tropes instead of doing anything original. As a result, the movie's not even that scary, it's just grindy. It's a slog to get through this movie. Towards the end of it, like the literal last scene, one of the characters says, Quote, take me. Probably to get this mess over with a little bit faster. Like, Slendy, buddy, just end it already. And after all that, he doesn't even have the decency to do the death scene from Slender the Eight Pages. What a shit show. And you've ended up giving us the worst damn horror movie since One Missed Call. No offense. No, no, no I'm, I'm with you. you. Although I would actually argue that my movie's worse. Really? What would you rate it? Wait, Wait really? really? You, you let, let me do, do the honors? honors? Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, we both hate it. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd give it a low, low three. As one of the worst horror movies in over a decade. Harsh. But I'm gonna go with it. Slenderman is a terrible, tropey mess with a villain who has no idea what he wants to do or how he wants to haunt his victims. So instead, the writers were hoping to rope people in by being like, Oh, it's Slenderman, and it does not work. Everything about this movie is wrong. Nothing about this movie is right. There are a thousand bad horror movies out there. In fact, they make more bad horror movies than they make good ones. And this is one of the worst. I honestly have a hard time believing that they actually went ahead and made this movie. Why does this movie exist? Who said that they should make this movie? Who came into the studio and said, Slenderman's Time to Shine is 2018? four years after everybody stopped paying attention to Slender Man. I'm really, really tired of movies that are under the Sony brand being this out of touch with reality. Hopefully, someday soon, they'll get a wake-up call and they'll say- Wait, what? Oh, okay. They're doing a spin-off series for Sausage Party. Nothing is going to change. You're out of touch, Sony, and you're almost out of time. Don't go watch this movie, either. It's god-awful. And maybe it's a good thing that Slender disappeared forever. The dark and mysterious Slender Man. Where is he now? Well, well actually, I got, got a summer gig, gig at Camp Micamacamocamogo. I, I teach wilderness survival to the kids. kids. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Yeah, yeah and don't, don't forget, forget to check out my new show next year. year. Cryptids in cars getting coffee. That sounds awesome. My name is Hunter. Uh, wait, wait, uh, before you do the outro, uh, I believe you owe me something for coming on the show today. And what would that be? I'd like your flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, but seriously, seriously, if you, you could bet my check, uh, money's, money's been, been kind of tight this month. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I got you, buddy. My name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. This month I have a freebie for you all, so don't click off the video just yet. 
Below in the video description is a link to our webcomic, Fallout Equestria Comet Trails. It's really the only My Little Pony thing we have left going. It's set in an alternate reality called the Tumblrverse. It has all of our failed fanfics. It's an alternate reality where Matt fell into the mirror. And it's set 35 years after the original book. Mike is one of the main characters in this. It's genuinely good. If you haven't read it, you should definitely head down below. There's a button there that lets you read from the beginning. All 146 pages. We just had an update today, two page update, the chapter just rounded off, and things will pick back up either in December or very, very early next year. The whole thing is free, I make absolutely no money off of it, in fact the only thing keeping it going is my genuine enjoyment of continuing to work on it. So head down below and support this because it's purely your support that's keeping it going. I would also like to thank Frederator who is uh, our new multi-channel network. Starting next month, we're gonna be working with them. We're finally back under an MCN, guys. Once again, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next month. This was our 10th review this year. I did not think I would keep it up this long, but uh, we're in the home stretch now, basically. Thank you again for watching. Here's some credits, and Slenderman is gonna play us off. Who can, can make, make you so mad with a passing glance? Leave a bunch of notes around and make you crap your pants. The Slender Man, that's me. The Slender Man can. Look around the corner, wearing the stretchy clothes. Hiding in a bathroom with no showers or commodes The Slender Man The tentacly Slender Man, that's me